Your truth shall set you free. Have you ever heard that before? Maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. I think one time I heard it as, the truth shall set you free. So today I wanted to personalize it a little bit. Because my truth is not your truth, or your truth, or Lori's truth. We're very different in that regard. We all connect and we all came from that creative energy that we call life, that we call God, whatever we may call it, that's what binds us, that's what connects us. That is the inside. But each and every one of you are that unique divine expression. And when you connect with your truth, you're going to do it very differently than somebody else. You're going to say it very differently. You're going to show up very differently. And that's the beauty of it. It's the diversity of it. It's like the flowers in a garden with all of the many expressions of the divine. And I know this month the series has been about spiritual independence. Learning to understand, I believe, what that means to you. What it feels like to be free. I think we're very privileged and very blessed to live in a country where we truly can express and worship, if you will, believe in that which it is that we resonate with. We are very, very lucky and very blessed. I know my mom, actually she was born in China, she was Russian, and her family escaped from communism. And the youngest two sisters, and she was one of them, were born in China. And I always remember my mom saying, Americans, people in this country, they should kneel down and kiss the ground. They have no idea how blessed and lucky they are. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget that. I think we take it for granted. And with everything that's going on in the world right now, and especially in this country, and there's such disarray, and there's so much of a clashing and differences of opinions, I think now more than ever, it is truly incumbent upon us to remember that we are as free as we choose to be. Did you hear that word? As we choose to be. Because I can keep myself in a prison very easily. I know how to do that. And oftentimes that prison are the old belief systems, are the stories, are the things that perhaps I'm still living my life according to what has been offered me, according to what I've taken on throughout my whole life. And so when Melanie asked me if I would do this talk and she told me the theme, at first I was like, freedom, spiritual independence, I'm not quite sure what to do with that. And then when I get out of my own way, it was so easy because it was right in front of me the whole time. And it's the same with you. What is inside of you has always been there and will always be there. And that is creation. That is life itself that's seeking to express itself uniquely, beautifully, divinely as you. To me, that's freedom. That's what sets me free when I give myself permission to say, hey, you know what? Today, this is how I want to be. I get to choose. Dennis Merritt Jones, I don't know if some of you are familiar with him, he was actually a science of mind minister for about 23 years in the Simi Valley in California. And he's one of my favorite spiritual people. And he wrote a book a couple of years ago called Your Redefining Moments, Becoming Who You Were Born to Be. Dennis says, our soul knows who we truly are and what we are doing here. Living your unique truth expression happens when we learn to consciously bring our authentic, our authentic being into our human doing. I'm sure a lot of you remember the first time you heard the phrase, we're a spiritual being having a human experience. I'm sure I could see a show of hands in New Thought teachings the first time you heard that. And for me at first that was kind of confusing because that's certainly not how I grew up. And I had to get an idea or a better understanding of, oh, what is a spiritual being? And, oh, I thought I was just a human being. So it was very confusing to me. So I love the way Dennis puts that again, because what he talks about in his book, and, and I love it so much, is he talks about living vertically. 
And vertically means when we're living from the inside, when we are connected and we are living from that place. And in our humanness, we live horizontally. We live on this plane and we're in the world out there. So I like the way, and, and a lot of people express it like this, but I like the way he talks about it. It's the coming together. And even in the reading that Maria did, it talked about the completion of the inside and the outside. So how are you showing up in your life? And if I asked you this question, give it some thought for a moment. What would your life look like if you were living your truth? Would it look any differently than it looks right now? And if so, what would those differences be? Does it mean that you say what's on your mind or you tell somebody how you feel? or you express your opinion regardless of what's going on out there? Does it mean, what does it mean? Is it just about that? Or is it about showing up with compassion? Showing up because you care? Again, what is so important here is for you to get very clear about what that means to you. Just like we all have our own understanding of God, our relationship, what that means to us because creation, life itself, our soul self, I believe, is seeking to express, as I mentioned a moment ago. It came here in this lifetime because you, lucky you, how fortunate you are, you get to personalize it. You get to make it look just like you. And Ellen, nobody's going to do it quite like she does. Nobody's going to say it quite like she does because there isn't anybody else other than this unique expression that's happening in every moment. That's the tricky part. It's learning to live life moment by moment. In the present is the only place in which we can capture what is happening right then to say, oh my goodness, here's a window of opportunity. Am I going to walk through it? Or am I going to turn away because I'm distracted? Or I'm busy? Or I've got this mental chatter going on? Or I'm so busy worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow? Or I'm still irritated and aggravated about what happened yesterday? To me, freedom is knowing in this very moment there isn't anything from here and isn't anything from here or anything outside of me that is distracting me from bringing that full-on expression of life, of creation. That, to me, is a birthday party every single day. In fact, we should light candles every single day and sing happy birthday because, to me, it's being reborn, rebirthed every single day. And to break it down further to say, beyond that, it's every moment, it's every minute, it's every second. Just like your breath. Your breath is breathing you all the time. Until your body says, hey, you know what? I've done what I came here to do in this lifetime. I'm ready for the next great adventure. Because the soul is eternal. That inside of you, creation is, is always. I think that's fantastic. And in those moments when I feel disconnected or I feel separate or I feel whatever, I'm like, Jeannie, it's time to take breath. It's time to remind yourself that no matter what is happening in my horizontal life, that within is where the magic is. It's where life is always calling me to come home to that place. This morning was very interesting because as I was getting ready to come here, I had taken a shower and I got out of the shower and all of a sudden I looked down and I saw water seeping out from the vanity and I'm like, you're kidding. I've got somewhere I need to go and somewhere I need to be. Well, my vertical, authentic self was like not there in that moment. My human self was going, oh my goodness, now what do I do? So I had to do a couple things to take care of it in that moment. But driving here, I'm like, well, I hope those towels will hold that water until I uh, get home for church, right? So anyway, it's those kinds of things. It's the stuff of life, however insignificant it may seem at times. 
that pulls us in a different direction. Or the stuff that's really hard. The loss of a loved one. The prayers this morning, praying for someone's health and well-being. Or for somebody on their journey where they're in a moment of like, what direction do I turn in? And to say, oh, you know, all you got to do is live from the inside out and you got it made. That sounds easy or simple, but that's not always the case. And I think what's so nice is we get to remember that what we really need to do is make things that we do that bring us more deeply connected to source into our daily practice. I think it was in Dennis Merritt Jones's book. I think it's realization when we have the awakening without application is hallucination. And I love that because if you think about it, you have this realization and you have this awareness and all of that, but then what do you do with it? You go, okay, well, I know this stuff, and man, I'm like really spiritually immature and I'm involved and all that stuff. Are you doing anything with it? Are you applying it to your daily life? Is it making a difference in your life and in the lives of other people? Is it making a difference on the planet and in the world? Because that's what we're here for, is what I believe. Our soul came here to expand and grow and learn what it learns through you as you, and we're here to leave something that's beautiful and wonderful. So the realization and the application without any of that, I think we are hallucinating most of the time because we're just in this world of, okay, well, that's nice to know that, and, you know, my vibration is great today, and, and I'm, I'm up there in the clouds, and say, well, that's great. But what are you doing with it? And it's not admonishing anyone. It's just simply asking the question, what are you doing with it? Are you enjoying your life? Are you having fun with it? Are you aligned with what is inside of you? Out here. Do they match? Are you bringing it front and center to this experience, to this game of life, if you will? Within the heart of the true seeker lies an inherent wisdom that silently whispers, before you can live an authentic life, you must first know who it is you authentically are. That's kind of what I've been talking about already. Those seeking to live a more authentic life inherently know it requires great courage to go deeper, beyond your known history, and where, for the first time, you intentionally, that word, intentionally, connect with your roots, your original self. And you affirm that you are part of something that is so vast, that is endless and so magnificent, than you experience when you're living superficially on this horizontal plane of life. Part of courage to me is having a willingness to say, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go in this direction. I'm going to make an effort. I'm going to make a commitment to change my thinking. I'm going to be willing to, ooh, go even deeper and look at the belief systems that are driving my life. To look at what stories and stuff I may still be carrying with me that are interfering with that connection, that are, that are mucking up that on connection so that I know there's no short circuiting going on here, that I am plugged in and I am tapped in more often than not. And in my humanness, when I'm not tapped in, it's not a time for me to beat myself up, which I certainly know how to do. And I imagine some of you know how to do that as well. At least I like to think I'm not the only one. Because we're good at that. And, and to me, that's another reminder of I'm living horizontally again. And I want to go back to this point of integration. To this intersection of all that I am in my authentic beingness and bring it into my human doingness. Where the joy, it lifts me up just because it does. Because the energy is so vibrant and so powerful. Lao Tzu loved this quote, at the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are and you know what you want. And the you 
is your soul self. It's your core self. So sometimes we say, well, I don't know what I really want. That's ego. That's ego saying, eh, you don't have a clue. When we can begin to say, I want to go deeper. And it's not about discovering anything new. It's about excavating and uncovering what has always been there. That freedom and that joy, that exaltation of like, wow, it was there all along, kind of like the Wizard of Oz, you had it all along. And you had to make the journey to get to the place to simply be reminded. It was there all along. That, to me, is time for celebration. That, to me, is time for fireworks. Of course, not around my dogs. Uh, they had a hard time here on the 4th of July. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. It's time to, to light the candles, to light the fireworks, to celebrate, and to go, oh my goodness. In every moment, I am growing. I'm becoming more mature. I'm learning how to live life in such a way that I never have before. With full integration, with full on, like, yes, this is awesome. And to me, what I have found, and perhaps you do too, or have to, is that that core, that being, that's love. That's the word I call it. I can call it my soul self, my authentic self, my whatever self, my original self, but to me, it's love. And, and that works for me. So that would be my truth, to say that to you. And perhaps you have a different way to look at it. And that's perfect because whatever it is that resonates with you, that allows you to go and be and do, and to experience your true essence in a magical way, I say, right on. And I celebrate you in doing that. Some of you are probably familiar with the book, The Shack. Some of you may have read it and, and heard about it. Actually, the author, William Paul Young, was on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday recently. And when I listened to his talk, it was after I had already put this one together, and I had to smile because the message is the same. And, it, and it's going into that place that feels so broken sometimes and so disconnected with all the stuff in there and being able to come out of it and see something new and to truly be transformed. It's really to me more about transcending to where we rise above it. And it's in that place of where we meet, what I said, the vertical self and the horizontal self that Dennis Merritt Jones so beautifully talks about. It's in that place where they come together where there is transformation. But William Paul Young says the movement toward wholeness is the way. That's the humanness of our being when it matches the truth of our soul self. So for him, his is about returning to wholeness after what had happened with him and, and, and going through that process of healing to return to wholeness. To me, wholeness, returning to wholeness is returning to love, where we feel complete again. And it's moving towards that and knowing when those things come together that we are there. And I think we journey in and out of that at times. You know, that's, that's part of what the soul is like. Okay, well, I already know this stuff, but I want to experience it through you. I want to see how you're going to do it. I want to live it through you and have a marvelous time. So the question I ask you this morning is, are you willing to go deeper? Are you willing to take a closer look at what is there, at perhaps what it is that gets in the way or what blocks you or maybe what you've covered up? Are you willing to step into that place with courage and say, yes, I'm willing to do this, and I may not have a clue how to do it, but I'm open to it. That's why I mentioned that in the meditation this morning, to be open and willing to say, yes, I want to do this. I want to get my tools together. I want to roll up my sleeves, and I want to go in there, and I want to excavate, and I want to unearth that which has covered me up so that I can truly know freedom, that I can taste it and experience it and allow the energy of that to propel me even further into the most amazing experience that I have yet to know. Because to me, it gets better and better. It's like unearthing these treasures within ourselves that we can enjoy them. And we get to share 
them with others. And that, to me, is the ticket. That we can be revealed, and we can be transparent, and we can be raw, and we can just be. And in that place, we can connect heart to heart. There was a fantastic quote that I came up with, and I'm just going to say it is fantastic. It was by a woman named Martha Graham. Some of you may not have heard of her. She was a dancer, actually. And this is in the 20s, 30s, 40s, in that era. And actually, she was a pioneer of modern dance. And if you, read, if you look up her name, it's going to blow you away when you read about this woman. But what caught my eye is she set the precedent for modern dance. And she was the first female to be invited to the White House to dance. And she was the first civilian to receive the Presidential Medal of, guess what the word is, freedom. Go figure. And this quote that she wrote, this, what she, uh, it just blows me away. And I just I had to share it with you. I thought, if anything I read you this morning, it's got to be this. Yes, you are that important. There is a vitality, a life force, an energy, a quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you, only one of you, in all time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist through any other medium and will be lost. Woo. When I read that, and even now as I read it to you, it is like, oh, the moment is at hand, right here and right now. Are you willing? Because you can step into that place to know that you matter. You make a difference because you are the light that Lori sung about earlier. And in order for that light to emanate from you, you have to be willing to say, yes, I want to be that channel. And I want all the other stuff that gets in the way of that brilliance, of that radiance, I want it gone. So I commit to doing what I need to do to allow that to flow through me and to shine like a, like a beacon in the night, like a lighthouse. That sometimes to me is what I think we are called to remember, that we are like the lighthouse, to shine that light for ourselves, in terms of our purpose, but also so that others can find their own way in that place. So I just want to offer you a couple of tips before I close this morning. A couple of things, well, actually three different things to help you. If you're wanting to go deeper and dig deeper, it's like, Jeannie, how do I do that? How do I do that? Mindfulness is one of the greatest practices and the greatest tools that you will ever find, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many others out there as well. There's tons of research on it to substantiate the effectiveness of it. But truly, mindfulness is about being right here, right now, in this present moment, and aware of what's happening without judgment, without any comment about it, just allowing whatever it is is there to be so that you can access and be in that present moment and begin to notice, and that's the word, notice what is unfolding so that you can capture it, as I said earlier, in that instant, when that opportunity presents itself and there's something you are to know, an aha moment that's being revealed to you and go, wow, okay. So there are a lot of things that you can do that's a whole other conversation to talk, and I've actually talked about mindfulness before, but I really encourage you to become a student of mindfulness and to bring it into your life as one of your power tools in your toolbox because it is amazing, it's transforming, and I could go on and on, but I'll stop with that. Uh, the other thing is silence, learning how to be in the silence. Wayne Dyer says, make peace with silence and remind yourself that it is in this space that you will come to remember your spirit. When you're able to transcend an aversion to silence, you'll also transcend many other miseries. 
And it is this silence that the remembrance will be activated. So learn to be silent. Learn to be quiet. Learn to listen in that space. The component with that, kind of the partner with that, is stillness. It's a poem by Adi Ashanti that says, be still and unknow. How often do we hear be still and know? This is be still and unknow. I am the unknowingness of an unknown mystery. If you want to know something, go elsewhere. If you want to unknow everything, then sit and listen. The silence of you is the sound of your knowledge collapsing. Let me read that again. The silence inside of you is the sound of your knowledge collapsing. Remember, it is you who said, I want to be free. That's what your soul is saying. So bringing the soul again into your humanness, I want to be free. Bruce Lee, a lot of you know, actor, martial artist, and such, reminds us also that stillness is not necessarily about being still. It's kind of like in music. The pause, the stillness between the, in the spaces, between the notes. Bruce Lee says the stillness and stillness is not the real stillness. Only when there is stillness in the movement <clears throat> does the universal rhythm manifest. And again, mindfulness can help you with this because you can be so present with the present that you begin to notice things that you've never seen before. <clears throat> and the third thing that I wanted to offer, maybe it was the fourth, I've lost count, <laughs> is the practice of self-inquiry. And this to me is a very powerful practice and to me probably one of the scariest ones Although, if you say, I've, I've got this, and I'm willing, and I'm open, it won't be scary at all. Because it really is calling you to look at places and to ask questions that can be really hard questions. Where did I come from? Where will I go when I leave here? Why can't I let whatever it is go? What role do I play in how my life is unfolding? Do you ever think about that? What role do I play? And how my life is unfolding, or something just happening to me randomly. Am I being who I was born to be? Am I learning from my mistakes and failures and growing every day because of them? Or am I stuck in them for whatever reason? Have I been looking to someone or something for my sense of identity? How do you define yourself? Is it from within? Or is it an external definition that perhaps you're still living from? Am I living a life of purpose and meaning? Again, only you can answer these questions in that place of raw honesty. When I die, will the planet be a better place than it was when I got here? Because I was here? What are my gifts I bring to share with the world, and am I sharing them, and if not, why? And those are just a few. You can make up your own questions, because deep within you, you already know the questions that need to be asked. And all the answers that you seek are already there if you're willing to dance in that place. If you're willing to dance and allow Spirit, God, all that is to guide you along that dance floor, trusting and letting go to the experience of what is happening within you in every moment. For me, again, as I said earlier, it's about a return to love. It's about going into that place within, because to me, love is patient, love is kind, but to me, love is pure freedom. And that, to me, is a place in which to dance, a place in which to celebrate. And the love is the truth, I believe, that will set you free. And I thank you.
Namaste.